is to, and I'm sure we're all aware of it, but it's to reinforce the attention that we need to give, um, not just in terms of our, our words or economic policies, mm-hmm. but in terms of our minds to those that are still outside yep. and still working you know, under these, all the weather conditions mm-hmm. that you just mm-hmm. discussed with Dr. Hong, the hot, the cold, the sweat, the everything. Rain, yep. You know, inside we get the pleasures of air conditioning, controlled environments. But throughout this pandemic, there have been people in South Korea that have been working even more so than mm-hmm. usual. And it, it's just to try to draw attention to their plight. Right. And not necessarily find remedies for it, but at least bring it to more sort of mm-hmm. public awareness. I mean, I think the medical front workers, um, they just re- reached a, a, you know, a dramatic sort of um, agreement yeah. and they called off their strike this morning. So that's right. amazing. And we all recognize them as heroes, especially during this pandemic. Mm-hmm. But uh, your kind of title, I love this. Not all heroes wear capes, do they? Not yet. Yeah. Marvel, big superhero <laughs> movies are all the thing, and they all wear sort of leggings, and they're mm. all so handsome, mm-hmm. so beautiful, you know, perfect bodies. But yeah, not all heroes wear capes. Mm. Sometimes they're the person knocking at your door, delivering things for you. So yeah, well done for the nurses uh, mm. and those workers with their strikes. Looking at delivery workers now. Um, The number of delivery workers in South Korea has gone up 12%. And so the the amount of people doing this job, uh, as reported this week, has risen over Mm -hmm. the last year. So 12% in just the second half of last year. So we're at a record high, I imagine, right? Uh huh. Record high. So there's about 400. So of December last year, statistics are always a little bit behind, right? right? So if we look at, what is it, eight months ago, nine Mm -hmm. months Mm -hmm. ago, nearly 400,000 people doing this job Mm. out there in uh, all conditions. Mm -hmm. And I would imagine that it's probably increased uh, since then. And we all know the reasons why, of course, with the pandemic, you know, we're staying at home. There's a lot more contactless uh, deliveries being required. um, um, And also with, so there's greater demand, but also there are more workers trying to go in that area as well because they have not been able to earn a living in other ways as the pandemic kind of shut down their industries or businesses. Sometimes we can look at reports, and uh, there are various outlets that do this, that that praise South Korea for its economic performance during this pandemic. And and that should be recognised, actually. But it should also be taken in context that for some people, there there seems to have been a little bit of a transfer of wealth, where lots of small shops, cafes and things like this have had to close Mm -hmm. down. And we, we see large... multinational companies and corporations surviving record profits. So it it, it is like that. Just looking at sort of delivery, which is one of your questions of the day for the people. And I like the idea of getting expert lessons on Naver. I might try (laughs) to win that prize from Max Pedian and myself. Food delivery was up 80% from last year. Mm -hmm. That's a huge increase because it was already... We know how much Koreans yes. order food or Korean mm-hmm. people. It's up 80% from last year. There's literally nothing you cannot order. You can order cut fruit, p a t b i n g s u coffee, you know, Alcohol. desserts. Al- really? I did not know you can do <laughs> yeah. that. But anyways, <laughs> yeah. but like you say, there's literally nothing that you cannot get delivered. So right. it is so convenient. And the delivery cost, yes, it's a couple of thousand won. But again, you know, if you consider the cost and time of get, going there yourself, mm. it's so convenient. So it of course, is. everyone is really doing this. And it's not just the convenience now, it's, you know, being safe and mm-hmm, keeping mm-hmm. your family safe. So y- you mentioned the strike that was called off this morning. There was one for delivery drivers back in June. That is true too. Um, so that's for how many hours a, a week they mm-hmm. will work, no more than 60. That doesn't take place, that doesn't kick in until January 2022. Next year. Right, so all that was agreed, but the the companies have sort of said, we need some time Mm. to put this into practice, which is perhaps fair enough, but it does also mean that this situation is still ongoing. Mm -hmm. And um, sort of last week, there was this report in ABC Australia, um, and it was a fantastic article. Uh, When I got to the end of it, I almost had tears in my eyes Mm. because it was so... Uh, It was so, I wouldn't say well written, but it was so, it felt very real. And it was uh, accompanied by various pictures, moving images. One of these new Mm -hmm, articles mm -hmm. that when you scroll down, pictures appear and everything. And um, it looked at the case of Songuk. And it it sort of went with him on a day-to-day basis. So you got that sort of real-life experience of what Songuk was going through. Songuk is a delivery man. He's a Mm -hmm. delivery man, yes. And 
200 boxes piled in his truck. It goes through. With each one he delivers, he gets about 800 won for each one. For each box. For wow. each box. He has a 16-hour day. In that 16-hour day, he earns about $180. Mm-hmm. 20,000 won, 200,000 won. But then from that, he has to pay tax, he has to pay petrol, he has to pay his phone bill, mm-hmm. um, penalties for late deliveries. And then he hasn't seen his daughters in six months. So he's living near the logistics centre. I see. And because he's out meeting people doing this all the time, and there have been COVID cases amongst delivery drivers, mm-hmm. his wife with the two daughters has said... If you're doing that job, it's better if you stay oh. there rather than coming back to the house every mm-hmm. day with mm-hmm. the two young girls. And so he said, sort of, they're always on my mind. This is the reason I'm doing of this. Course. I'm doing my best. And it shows you him doing sort of video calls with oh, them at night. Goodness. And uh, that's the situation that he was going mm-hmm. through. And on top of that, the unions have said that sort of 21 delivery drivers have died from overwork during this pandemic. The the South Korean government has confirmed Mm -hmm. uh, some of them, not Mm -hmm. all of them, but uh, this is the situation that many people like Song Uk are going through. Exactly. I mean, Song Uk's story, uh, when you hear it in such detail, it's it's heartbreaking. But again, he's not the only one going through this, unfortunately, as you say, because Mm. each delivery box costs so little, like a thousand won or or even less. So they have to deliver as many. That means working as many hours as they can. And because of the added risk of the pandemic, like you say, they're trying to cut back on time and cut back on the potential of um, transferring whatever virus that he might pick up to his daughters and and family. It's heartbreaking. And like you say, with the food deliveries as well, I think you've seen in the news the heartbreaking stories of delivery guys in the most recent days being killed um, by trucks or whatnot. They're on the road because they're trying to get these deliveries done on time as soon as possible in whatever weather conditions. So we see this, unfortunately, over and over again. It's, It's heartbreaking. But, um, I mean, yes, the companies are going to try to make, you know, some yeah. improvements. But what can we do? I mean, that's kind of what we also asked our listeners, right? We use it for so many reasons. But what can we do to help maybe? That's a really good question. And I won't profess to have all of the answers here. Mm-hmm. What I will draw your attention to is a, a study by h a g u n k u who um, has a PhD from Northwestern University. And he wrote a book which focused on Korean workers and the rights. And there are some really interesting ideas in this book by h a g u n k u I, I highly recommend it. Um, just looking at that, how to possibly approach this problem, he mentions that Because of Korea's history, because mm-hmm. of its political thing, not many parties have really sought to identify themselves with l a b o r mm-hmm. with the working class, because there's always this uh, worry about alignment with sort of communism and, uh, and workers. That might be changing slightly now, I feel. Right. But that's definitely part of Korea's modern history. Mm-hmm. Economic It, growth was always paramount, right? right? Economic mm-hmm. growth was paramount. These were sort of soldiers for the nation. Mm-hmm. And so to align with those rights has been difficult. But one of the points that I found in this book that was really, I thought, meaningful was that the workers over time in South Korea, it's not always about economic conditions. Of Mm. course it is, Mm -hmm. but it's more about the treatment that they receive from other people, the Mm. treatment while working that they receive from their superiors, uh, the people in charge, but also the wider member of the community. Us, the customers. Us, the customers, Mm -hmm. and people that talk about things and and everything. Mm -hmm. And so we sometimes might look at strikes and things like this and say, that's an overreaction, can't you just do your job? Mm-hmm. We're always working. But the, again, h a g u n k u would say, well, these emotional reactions are a result of workers feeling that it's more of a a moral situation or a humane treatment situation. And I think the two are tied together because generally when your income is higher, um, people get treated with more respect as well. So we sometimes have a tendency to kind of the way we treat people depends almost on their income level. So maybe it goes hand in hand. But at the same time, every person wants to be appreciated. And considering the essential nature of the job that these Mm, delivery workers perform for us, how can we imagine getting through the pandemic without them. I think that, uh, yeah. That's the key part. Mm. I mean, these people provide an essential service for all of us. It's not as if they're sort of providing an entertainment that we could live without Mm -hmm. or that's not really necessary, but it is so vital Mm -hmm. to all of us and also for staying safe and uh, and preventing the spread. So yeah, um, 
humane treatment, recognition right. of mm-hmm. these workers. Yeah. I mean, I know some people have been you know, putting out notes and snacks and drinks for delivery workers, especially like, during the Chuseok time when they're yeah. super, super busy. Yeah. But, you know, a simple thank you, um, you know, showing respect and mm-hmm. trying to consolidate orders, whatnot, and just, yeah, humane treatment just like that for their hard work would probably be what 